Giuseppe, the clutch hand Morello, Italian, D, Latin small letter S, U, modifier letter vertical line Z, Latin small letter open A, P, Mo, modifier letter vertical line R, Latin small letter open A, low, May 2nd, 1867, August 15th, 1930. Also known as, The Old Fox, was the first boss of the Morello crime family and later top advisor to Giuseppe, Joe the Boss, Masria. He was known as Pidju, Sicilian diminutive form of Giuseppe and his rivals the Castellamarese knew him as Peter Morello. He was famous for having the one finger deformed right hand that resembled a claw. In the 1890s, Giuseppe founded a gang known as the 107th Street Mob, which would later evolve into the Morello crime family. Today the Morello crime family is known as the Genovese crime family and is the oldest of the five families in New York City. Early life Giuseppe Morello was born in Coral One, Sicily on May 2, 1867. His father Calogero Morello died in 1872 and his mother Angelina Piazza remarried one year later to Bernardo Terranova, who was a member of the Coral One Mafia. Bernardo and Angelina had seven known children. Two sons named Vincenzo, the first, born in 1874, died at age two. The second was born in 1886, Saro, born 1888, Niccolo, born 1890, Lucia, born 1877, Salvatrice, born 1880, and Rosalia, born 1892, died October 14, 1915. The Morello and Terranova children grew up together and Bernardo may have facilitated Giuseppe's early induction into the local Cosqua, or Mafia clan. Crickley notes that Morello also had an uncle, Giuseppe Battaglia, who was a leader in the Corleonesi Mafia and who may have assisted in his nephew's passage. Giuseppe Morello married Maria Rosa Marsalisi, 1867-1898, in 1889. The couple had two children. A daughter, Angela, born 1891 and died 1892, died in infancy and a son, Calogero, Charles Morello, born November 1892 and Coral One died 1912. The exact year of Morello's emigration to the United States is not certain. Dash writes that Morello emigrated in 1892 after becoming a suspect in a murder in Coral One and after his counterfeiting ring had been compromised. Despite his departure the Italian government brought a case to court and found him guilty of money counterfeiting. On September 14, 1894, he was sentenced to six years and 45 days imprisonment plus a fine and deprived of the right to hold public office. It is possible that the sentence was handed down in absentia. According to Critchley it appears that Morello left Sicily for New York around this time. Morello's three half-brothers Niccolo, Vincenzo and Saro, his stepfather Bernardo, his mother Angelina, his sister Maria, his half-sister Rosalia, his wife Maria Rosa Marsalisi and son Calogero would arrive in New York City on March 8, 1893. In the mid-1890s, Giuseppe Morello moved to Louisiana in search for employment and was joined by the other members of the Morello Terranova family. The following year, they moved to Texas and farmed cotton. After contracting malaria, they returned to New York about 1897. Morello tried his hand in different business ventures, including failed investments in a saloon and a date factory. Morello's first wife, Maria Rosa Marsalisi, died in 1898 in Coral 1.in 1902, he acquired a saloon at 8 Prince Street in Manhattan which was to become a meeting place for members of his gang. In December 1903, Morello married Nicolina Lena Salemi, 1884-1967, who stayed with him for the rest of his life. Morello Crime Family In the 1890s, Giuseppe founded the 107th Street Mob, which would later evolve into the Morello crime family. In 1903, Ignazio, the Wolf Lupo, the Sicilian Mafia boss in Little Italy, Manhattan, married Morello's half-sister Salvatrice. Morello built his empire based on his merciless ordering of death sentences against everyone who dared to face him. Lupo, his main enforcer, 
was responsible for more than 60 murders in a 10-year period. The Morello family would frequently employ the notorious barrel murder system, dumping dismembered corpses into large wood barrels. The barrels would then be thrown into the sea, left on a random street corner abandoned in a back alley or shipped to non-existent addresses in another city. Family businesses included extortion, loan sharking, Italian lottery, robbery and counterfeiting. Illegally earned money was then legitimized by legal businesses such as stores or restaurants owned by the family, making them the first crime family in town to organize this kind of money laundering. They also introduced revolutionary ways of extorting small amounts of money every week from business owners in exchange for protection, as opposed to the theft of large amounts which might bankrupt them. This technique was adopted from black hand gangsters and it led to increased profits for the gang. Two members of Morello's Famiglia who became captains under Morello and who later gained much prominence in the New York underworld were Giuseppe Masria and Salvatore Di Aguila. By 1905, Morello had created the largest, most influential Sicilian crime family in New York City and was recognized as Capo di Tutti Capi, boss of bosses, by mafia leaders in other U.S. cities, according to Nicola Gentile. Fall and return Morello was found guilty of counterfeiting again in 1910 and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He was later paroled. In 1922, President Warren Harding freed Morello from the constraints of his parole by granting a conditional commutation of sentence. The youngest of his three half brothers, Niccolo Terranova, took over control until 1916, when he was killed by the Neapolitan boss in Brooklyn, Pellegrino Murano, as well as Tony Paretti as part of the Mafia Camorra War. Morello's remaining two half-brothers Vincenzo Terranova and Ciro Terranova took over as boss and underboss and ran the family until Morello's release from prison. Newly released from Atlanta Federal Penitentiary in 1920 and trying to retake control of his empire, Morello found himself considered a threat to his former captain, now turned mafia boss, Salvatore Di Aguila, who, Within a year of Morello's release, ordered Morello killed. Morello, along with a number of others now under orders of death by Di Aquila, fled to Sicily for a spell. One of these men, a former Di Aquila gunman, Umberto Valenti, went after Morello and his chief protector and ally, Giuseppe Masria, in order to regain the favor of Di Aquila. A war ensued and, after much violence and some prominent deaths among the mafiosi involved, Valenti was killed by Masria gunmen, some say including Marsoli Charles Luciano in August 1922. With Valenti gone, Diaguilla's power began to lose its luster of invulnerability. Morello, sensing his time to rule had passed and the power of Masria was on the rise, became consigliere to Masria and prospered under him throughout the prohibition years of the 1920s. Castel Amaris War and Death During the Castel Amaris War, between 1930 and 1931, Masria and Morello fought against a rival group based in Brooklyn, led by Salvatore Maranzano and Joseph Bonanno. Morello, an old hand in the killing game, became Masria's war chief and strategic advisor. One of the first victims of the war, Giuseppe Morello, was killed along with associate Joseph Periano on August 15. 1930 while collecting cash receipts in his East Harlem office. Joseph Valici, the first made man in the American Mafia to turn state's evidence, identified Morello's killer as a Castellamarese gunman he knew as Buster from Chicago. Filmmaker Martin A. Gauche, The Last Testament of Lucky Luciano, a purported autobiographical account of Charles Luciano of disputed authenticity, claims that Luciano orchestrated Morello's murder himself. References Further reading Critchley, David, 2008. The Origin of Organized Crime. The New York City Mafia, 1891-1931. London, Routledge. ISBN 9780415882576. Dash, Mike, 2009. The First Family, Terror, Extortion and the Birth of the American Mafia. London, 
Simon and Schuster. ISBN 9781400067220. Syfakis, Carl, 2005. The Mafia Encyclopedia, 3rd ed. New York. Facts on File. ISBN 0816056943.